welcome back and I'm just looking at our scarab canvas and it's really nice and dry now the tissue paper has shrunk all over to the over the string which is nice um, the color is very bright so my next stage is I um, want to distress it a little bit and just make it look a bit older and a bit more antiqued so I've got some white acrylic paint got a little dish of old brushes this one's bristle bristles are actually better for this kind of technique this is an old sort of paintbrush that I just found knocking around so I thought that might be quite a nice thing to use so um, I just want to dab, dab off most of the paint onto like a piece of scrap paper and I'm just going to start in the corner just very lightly stroking over the, the tissue paper, paper layer, so we'll go in each direction. So I'm just trying to make it look a bit more old and a bit more like an Egyptian artifact type of a look. I've made myself a cup of tea and I've also made myself um, a bit of a solution of the tea bag and some water just to make a bit of tea solution so tea is a quite a good way of making something look old and antiqued so I'm going to use my brush uh, I'm just going to drip it over the over the canvas a little bit of stain where it's where it's um, touches the white acrylic just takes the edge off the white it's almost a bit too white I'm gonna have to let the top dry before I do the size else it's all gonna run and drip I don't particularly want it to drip on this occasion but sometimes dripping might be a good look not for this particular thing today, so strip that here and there. Smooth that off a little. Just give that a few moments to, to dry again. Right, I've finished doing the tea stain on the sides. And I'm just deciding what to do next. So I think I will just go over the yellow because I think it is quite bright. So using the same dry brush technique, I'm going to just go over the yellow. I'm going to follow the circle, so it's quite nice. It will pick up the white on, on the edge of the string as well, which I don't mind. I think I might go over the whole beetle as well, just pick up the, the string lines really. I'm just 
glancing over the, the string. Picks up the details of the beetle, quite nice. balance that a bit, put a bit too much white there but just balance it out a bit. for now and again I need to let that dry and then decide what the next stage is going to be it's probably going to put some gold around around the highlights there around the where, the where I put the string just to give a bit of definition to the beetle and I might actually put some gold on the sun I'm not sure yet I'll have to do do one bit of time and see how it feels okay thanks for watching see you in a bit Right, I'm, I'm back and I've left that to dry. My next stage is I'm going to add some gold paint. I'm going to dry brush it over the yellow. So I've already put a, bit of, a little bit of white there and a little bit of tea stain there. So I've got these metallic acrylic paints, which I picked up quite cheaply from the works. And I think I'm going to use a bit of bronze and a bit of gold mixed together just to make it a bit richer because the gold's a little bit uh, well it's not gold enough for my liking so I'm just going to make it a bit more an antique gold by just putting a little bit of copper in like that I've got a dry bristle brush and I want to get a little one this time so I can get in all the nooks and crannies I'm just going to mix that together. Again, I'm just going to use a piece of paper to get the excess off. And I'm just going to start over here, just lightly. Brush the gold on.
Right, so it's nice and dry again. I'm going to use some of this mirror effect foil just to highlight the outline of where I put the string. I'm going to use this, it's called whoops, Mixtian Relief by Pebio and Gade or Gidi or I'm not sure how you pronounce that but um, basically I have to draw with this kind of glue all around my raised edge where I want my gold foil to stick. So you do this, so just leave for an hour till it goes tacky and then I'll show you how uh, the foil fixes to it. So I'm just going to open this if I can. So I've got a tiny thin nozzle there. I'm just going to try it over here just in case it produces a huge blob. Right, so I might start on the inside and go out because I don't want to have to put my arm in it. So I'm just going to literally just draw, squeeze and draw basically. My hand's not too shaky. I'm going to have to move it so I can reach the areas. Right, there we go. So you can see that. I'm going to let that dry Just for an hour. And I'll come back to the next stage. Right, I've just um, been waiting for this to dry. This was the Pebio Mixtion Relief paste that I was squeezing around all of the string parts, which I did earlier. Um, it's nice and dry now. It's a little bit tacky. So I'm gonna take one of these mirrored sheets And you can see they're shiny on one side and kind of matte on the other. So it's the shiny side up you want to use it. So I'm literally going to just lay it over what I want and I'm just going to rub it, my finger, where I want it to stick. And it should leave the gold where the glue has been. I'm rubbing it quite firmly just to make sure it's stuck. I'm going to have to pick it up and move it a few times just to get all the various markings. I'm just going to 
Have a quick look, see what that's done. So that's come out quite nicely. So if you can see, it's kind of you can see the shiny, shiny parts that it's left. So I'm just going to carry on. So I think that's finished, hopefully you can see the gold detail now on that, it's quite a nice shiny finish. So I'll just get ready for the next stage. Right, welcome back. So my next stage is I'm going to decorate the beetle. I've got some of these Prism Fantasy Discovery Set paints by Pebio not used them before so this is going to be a bit of an experiment um, I'm aiming to get a kind of like a sort of an interesting honeycomb effect like like it says on the pack here um, chosen some colours I've got moonstone turquoise and emerald green so I think I'm going to use emerald green for the body it says mix well so I'm using this pipette that when I bought them from Hobbycraft they were kind of next to the packets. So I thought, oh, maybe that's something you need to use. So um, it says mix well and it's quite runny and it's quite strong smelling. So, <coughs> so I'm probably going to have to, if I use a brush, I'm going to have to use spirits to clean it with. So this is a purely experimental. So if I don't like it, hopefully I'm going to be able to scrape it off. But I'm just going to try and put some in this area and just hope it does what it says on the tin so I'll just hope it's going to give like an enameled effect
Okay, I think that's enough playing for now. Just make sure it gets around the edges just there. Okay. Right. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. So I'll let that dry and hopefully that will be give us a nice effect. So we'll have to wait and see. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in a bit. Hello and welcome back. It's been about 24 hours now, so the um, the product, the Prism Fantasy Pebio product has nicely mixed and nicely merged and dried. So I'll just do a close up so you can see the kind of texture it's left. It's sort of gone all marbled and got little cells in there and a nice pattern where I've blobbed the green onto the, no, I blobbed the blue onto the green. It's kind of gone like tortoiseshell. So I'm quite pleased with that effect and where the gold's highlighting the the uh, relief and where the string was. So I think that looks quite nice. So um, I think I'm quite happy with it as it is. So the final stage is sealing this area in because this is tissue paper and acrylic. I think I need to seal it or if it's knocked or bashed it could tear off quite easily. And also it might be prone to fading because um, the inks in tissue papers tend to fade in the sunlight. So I'm hoping if I seal it with some varnish it might actually preserve the colour a bit more. So uh, I'm going to do that. And then we're pretty much done. So I'm just propping it up on this box just because it's the way it's catching the light. You can't see it, so um, I'm using Winsor Newton Galleria acrylic medium gloss varnish. Um, I wouldn't have minded a satin varnish for this, but because I don't seem to have it. And I thought gloss might complement the glossy finish of the beetle, so um, I'm just going to go with it and see what happens. Um, acrylic varnish doesn't really yellow, so um, hopefully it'll preserve the colour. So I'm going to just open it and dispense a bit into this. Oop, it's very runny. Into this dish, which is actually a lid off of something. But, so I think I'm just gonna I might start going around the beetle first and um, try not to get my sleeves in it. So I don't want any air bubbles either, so I'm just gonna very gently go around these and try and pop some of the air bubbles because I shook it and I thought I thought it might be you know separated, so I thought I shook it. But I've given myself lots of little bubbles now, which I didn't really want, so shaking it probably wasn't a good idea. But I'm hoping the bubbles will disperse. So I'm literally just going around the areas nearest the beetle, just so it gets in all the nooks and crannies. Okay, so that's done. So I'll put a photograph of the finished item once it's dried. So hopefully the shine will be less shiny, still be glossy, but 
Um, hopefully that will be nicely sealed. So I'll have a look at the end to see if it needs another coat or I might just leave it as that. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you've had some uh, ideas or some tips to try yourself. Um, if you do, let me know. And check out my Facebook page, Art for Wellbeing MK, and keep your eye out for some more videos. Thank you. Bye.